G'day guys, my name is Wildcard and welcome back to my channel. Thank you for following my content, I really do appreciate it. Today, we want to have a look at the extensive details of Rassi Erasmus' misconduct hearings and some of the decisions that Will Rugby came out against Rassi Erasmus. <clears throat> I do think that some of the stuff that's quite ridiculous that was leveraged against Rassi and the punishment really seems very severe against Erasmus. And it is pretty evident that Will Rugby is trying to set an example with Rassi Erasmus to essentially cover up their own, you know, uh, covering up their own, uh, what do you call it, incompetence with regard to their referees. And instead of holding their own referees and their own management accountable for a lack of coaching, a lack of uh, teaching at high standard for their own referees, they wanted to essentially cover up all of that with heavy-handed fines. Uh, and Rassi Erasmus seems to be the, the receiving game, the sacrificial lamb, so to speak, to that sort of mentality out of real rugby, which I do think is incredibly bad for the sport. Now, in recent times, we have seen some really, really poor refereeing. It started pretty much in 2019 Rugby World Cup. The first a week, the rugby was played pretty Normally, as we all kind of expect, really good matches. Argentina, France, extremely good matches. And then suddenly, World Rugby decided to make con head contact, severely penalize that. So for about so, so for a huge section of the Rugby World Cup in 2019, the people were getting sent off yellow card, red cards, just for a tiny brisk of a contact to the head. The, the issue with that is, sure, I agree, there should be you know, protection for the players uh, against head uh, concussions, but to change, literally like change the interpretation of the rules mid in during the middle of the Rugby World Cup is extremely poor form from rugby, from real rugby. They should have done this beforehand or they should have done it afterhand. And um, the fact that they decided to do it in the middle of the, of the Rugby World Cup, it was absolutely horrendous. And then, in recent times as well, there has been a lot of poor referee decisions that the World Rugby seems to not be able to hold accountable for. Uh, some, you know, There's a lot of them, but I'm just going to go through a couple of really big ones that probably a lot of you guys watching would remember quite freshly. Like the England versus Wales game, where the referee tells Owen Farrell to have a chat with his team and then, then kind of like had a chat with Bigger and starts the match without you know asking if the England team was ready or without informing Owen Farrell that was going to happen. So England was caught off guard for Wales scoring. And also, we remember in the same game, there was a blatant knock on by Luis Zamet. And then they, they, he was awarded a try anyway for Wales. And both of these calls were wrong later on, admitted. But again, th there should be more to it than just admitting that you were wrong. There needs to be more accountability for that. And also, there was last, uh, I think last week, Georgia came out and said basically the referees are not fair towards the tier two nations. They had a really tough game against France and essentially they got penalized quite severely. And it seems to be that France was able to get away with a lot of similar mistakes that they were making and not being penalized. And also we saw the on the weekend the so-called horrendous referee, horrendous, quoting uh, Dave Rennie here, referee uh, with the Wales against Australia game. I'm not going to go too much into that because I have other videos talking about this. But anyway, this once again, Dave Rennie, someone who's never criticized the referee in his, how long, 25-year referee, 20, 25-year career? How long was it? 20, 25 years coaching career. He's never criticized the referee and he came out and then he said something about the really poor performance. Now, so so as you can see, there's been a bit of a trend, a downward trend for the refereeing for World Rugby. And as a result, it's similar as a result, you know, this is probably the biggest one of the year where the first game with the Lions were... Um, there was a lot of mistakes that was made by the referee Nick Barry. In fact, uh, so Rassi Rassus made this video that entailed 36 mistakes, of which 17 of them Nick Barry agrees that he made a mistake on. So it's not just like one-sided and opinion. Both sides have agreed to some extent. There were definitely issues in that referee the mat, the, uh, in the refereeing of that match, and as a result, the the video was leaked and then. Uh, and then essentially, the World Rugby came out very heavy-handed to punish Rassi Erasmus for making the video in the first place. Now, now, there's a few points here I want to make, and I think and you, you'll really point out why 
the sanctions against Razzy Erasmus is really, really ridiculous. And is really, really over the top for, for what he's done. And I think it is basically a way that World Rugby is trying to discourage this sort of things to try to cover their own incompetence, essentially. So basically, today, this latest news came out that Rassi Erasmus was going to appeal the, the, the sanctions, which was a two-month ban and a, almost one-year suspension for match day activities. Uh, but he decided to withdraw his appeal, and he basically also apologized to the, to the, to the referee as condition of his, uh, as one of his, basically, um, you know, as one of his punishments from the from the hearings, right? So he apologized to fulfill that part of the of the the sanction, and then he also withdraws his appeals, which is uh, quite huge, I think, because I do think that some of these things are really severely over the top, and it's really not deserving of the punishment that uh, speaking of. So we shall go through some of the facts, and you, you you know maybe you can decide whether or not this is severe or not. But it looks extremely severe to me that the punishment that based on the 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 information that came out of the hearings uh, publicly that, that is valuable. So first up, obviously, Nick Barry uh, accused a couple of things. He, in his statement, he accused a couple of things that Rassi Erasmus was, uh, has done to him. So obviously, first one, he, he accused Rassi Erasmus of, of character assassination by putting the video out and essentially, you know, ruining his, trying to break his reputation as a, ref, uh, as a, a credible referee. Uh, and secondly, and more importantly, that Nick Barry alleged that Rassi Rasmus threatened him to sit down and go through the mistakes that that the referee made in the first test match of the Lions tour. If he had not done so immediately, uh, Rassi Rasmus apparently threatened Nick that he was going to release the video and make it public. So that's some, that's two very heavy charges uh in the testimony from Nick Barry. But both charges seem to have... Uh, well, one of the charges, the especially the second one, where Nick Barry accuses Rassi Rasmus of threatening him to meet up, otherwise he was going to release the video, seems to be a little bit of disagreement to whether or not Rassi Rasmus actually said that. So basically, Nick Barry actually called Jacko Pepper to discuss this issue. Uh, basically telling Pepper that Rassi wants the meeting, what should he do? And Pepper basically said, you know, gave him his advice on what to do. But Nick, Nick's, Nick's, from Nick's state, um, what do you call it, testimony, he actually told Jackal Pepper that Rassi was going to release the video. He didn't go to sit down with a meeting with him to go through the mistakes. But Jackal Pepper stated that he does not remember Nick telling him that was a condition for Nick to go to meet Rassi right away for the clarifications of the mistakes. So there's already a little bit of disagreement on whether or not Rassi actually threatened Nick to release the video to make it go public. Now, second point is that also that quite important is that Will Rugby has to kind of prove that Rassi Erasmus actually released the video intentionally to ruin Nick Barry's um, to ruin Nick Barry's reputation, right? So there has to be some kind of proof that Nick Barry actually, uh, so Erasmus actually released the video to, uh, actually released the video uh, on purpose to, um, to ruin, uh, yeah, on purpose uh, as, you know, as part of the threat for Nick for not, not releasing. But there has no, ev there's no evidence. So there, there is a, basically a timetable of when the video was released uh, and then it was privately sent to five people, including Nick and some Will Rugby members. And uh, and then it was basically, yeah, so, so there's a timeline of when the video went viral and none of that seems, none of that actually proves Rassi Erasmus released it on purpose, right? So we go through the timeline really quickly. So basically Rassi made the video uh, 7 p.m. the night, uh, you know, I think it was on a Monday night or maybe it was a Saturday or Sunday. He made it on the night. And the next day, uh, on the Wednesday, uh, sorry, on Tuesday, on Wednesday, he video, he sent the video to five people, Nick Berry, uh, Joe Schmidt at World Rugby, and Joe Judge at World Rugby, and uh, Jax uh, Ninamba, in the, obviously the Springbok head coach, and then the Springbok CEO, uh, South African Rugby CEO, Jury Brooks. So 
these five people are the only ones that have access to the to, to the video that is uploaded to Vimo, and the video is not password coded or pro, uh, or uh, password coded. But the only way for you to see the video is via this link. So he sent it to these five people, and then he proceeded to send the video to uh, a WhatsApp group, which is the team. So he sent the video to the team to the players, so the players can see that as well. So then the video basically. So so then on the twenty eighth of July. They started noticing, which is so later on that night, they started noticing the, the video uh, view count starts going up. And then eventually, so they started to, 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 to see what the, the breakdowns are. So they started to say the South Africa is eight from Australia, three from UK, two from France. So obviously you can see that maybe World Rugby has people in UK and France. And then Nick probably sent the video to Australia. And obviously the team members from the Springboard camp had a look at the video. So Rassi Rasmus essentially said, you know, how the F this went to Australia and UK seems to be really strange. And then the, and then later on, on that same day, he showed 131 views. And then there was 10 views from Brisbane. You know, obviously Nick sent it to, to, World, to Rugby Australia in Brisbane. I'm not sure... I'm, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what's going on here, but obviously Nick sent back, this is on, this can only be Nick because Nick is from Brisbane, that's sent to Queensland. So obviously the views from UK and France are the World Rugby members. And then on the next day, on the 29th of July, the video went viral on 40, 45K view. So essentially there's no proof here that suggests Erasmus had leaked this intentionally or threatened Nick and then as a result, Nick no showing up, he leaked it intentionally. But will rugby maintain its position that it's Erasmus's fault for not password coding the the uh, to take to not taking out the, the video or password coding the video? So that's basically what World Rugby, rugby said. So essentially, World Rugby, rugby is charging Erasmus for failing to protect the video and not actually engaging in active. So, so it's not actually actively engaged in character assassination as Nick Berry has had stated or threatening Nick. Uh, it's just a failure to, to protect the video. And also the, so, and also basically, essentially, if we have a quick look at some of the charges that was laid to, um, to, to Erasmus. So these are the five charges that are laid against, uh, six charges laid against Erasmus. So basically just to sum them up, the number one charge is basically threatening to release the video if the meeting was not taking place. And we've already established that this could not be verified because we have this previous video where Jack Pepper denies that Nick Berry mentioned that this was conditioned for him to meet up with Miss with Erasmus, so there's actually no solid proof that this actually occurs. Second charge is that he attacked the referees, which is which the video is you know uh, is, is is evidence. So short, sure, that's that's a tick. Number three, did not accept the ruling of the referee, and that's another tick. He did not agree with the referee. Number four, publishing of the video. So this is uh, again basically the fourth point says publish publish video. So basically, this is very arguable it's based on the information that they have. There's no evidence that. He published the video intentionally for public view and it had just been leaked and there's no actual so 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 there's no actual evidence that he actually published the video intentionally. So therefore they can't really say that this is the case. They can only say that he failed to protect the video, uh the privacy of the video essentially. So it's a little bit of a bit of miss there. And number five basically says uh the, the result of him publishing this video or result of him cre creating this video going public has caused public, uh, impaired public confidence in the integrity and good character of match officials. I mean, we saw 2019 Rugby World Cup and many, many, many games in, in recent times. I'm sure the everybody can see it. There's a huge issue with match officials and Will Rugby, is, this is just like rhetorical, right? They have an issue with officials and they, they are blaming Rassi and Marismasmus for pointing that out as the reason their officials are not are not being trusted. I mean, that makes no sense. But they're basically blaming Rassi Rasmus for you know lowering public confidence on the referees when in fact it's their own failing to train and improve on their own 
referees, provide adequate training for the referees and support. It's the result of public dropping public confidence in their referees. So it's, this is like, it's, this is really, really uh, bizarre how they even came up to this. And number six, uh, bringing the game into dis distribute. So they don't want, you know, negative publicity to the game, which he has done so. So with these charges, and also the South African rugby was basically with issue with two charges. And in summary, they both related to South African rugby failing to manage their members, you know, in terms of come when it comes to criticizing referees, so basically they got fined for failing to manage their own members. So the sanctions, this is something that, that's obviously way over the top. So firstly, he's banned from all rugby activities for two months. Secondly, he's banned from all match day activities till September 20, uh, 30, 2022. So that's like a year, almost a year of match day activities banning. And then also he has his, uh, also this is a, a warning, so he can't do this again. And then he has to apologize. So today, obviously, also the news, he's apologized. And he's, he was initially going to, uh, Rassi Rassam was initially going to appeal for this because he's, this is actually quite ridiculous, quite over, over the top. But he decided not to, just wanted to move forward, taking the higher ground, I guess. But if we have to have a look at some of these uh, suspensions, it's actually quite ridiculous, right? He's the director of rugby. He does more than just, you know, coaching the Springbok team. He has to coordinate the clubs around the country. He has to, to, to you know, talk to players, talk to uh, shareholders, talk to stakeholders. So he's not able to participate technically in any of those activities that is rugby related for two months. So for the next two months, it literally can't work. That is ridiculous uh, for, 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 for the director of someone holding the role of director of rugby. Because uh, that goes, you, you know, if you just said, can't be involved for, you know, spring box, like team related activity for two months, that is already like probably more than enough, right? Over the top. So for all rug rugby activities, as a director of rugby, that is like, yeah, that is ri ridiculously uh, high sanctioned. And also the match day activity sanctions. This is also extremely ridiculous. So uh, one of the ways we can see why these sanctions are really ridiculous is the fact that we can... So during the hearings, they actually cited previous incidents on uh, of, you know, coaches calling out referees inappropriately and the sanctions that was uh, levied to those referees, uh, to those no referees, to those coaches. And one of the coaches uh, was Eddie Jones. He essentially criticized... Uh, one of the in 2007 criticized one of the referee for scrum uh, scrummaging so he basically so basically this is what Eddie Jones said referee decided to ref the scrum in a different way mate which I thought was absolutely outrageous mate can't have that in professional rugby mate but unfortunately that is the case mate and then he's basically he was informed that he was going to get sued uh, he was going to get fined and then he said how much is the fine mate I'll have to check with my accountants Whatever the fine, I'll pay twice, mate. I thought it was outrageous. So then he was fine, right? So so for him to call out the referees scrummaging is outrageous. That's sure, that's only one point. That's just one aspect of the referee. He get fined for it. Uh, it's similar to what... So he's, he did not make a video about it, but he definitely publicly criticized the referee. So this is a fine, right? So, so what Rassi has done, he's criticized more factors from the referee. But he is, you know, so he should be maybe a bit more, maybe similar in this, but maybe like a bigger fine, right? Like his career has more aspect of the referee publicly. So, and then there's another one, and this is really bad by a, a Richard Cockerell from a uh, former, the current England assistant, former coach of Leinster in 2009. This is actually pretty bad, okay? This is probably somewhere that's like on the extreme end of, of, uh, of, you know, poor behavior towards the referee. He basically said, uh, he entered the technical area, uh, yeah, he entered the technical area, which is the, I guess, the news media said, uh, this blows is effing shite. You are all a bunch of useless, can't say that you on YouTube. And I'm going to slag this, can't say that on YouTube, off to every effing newspaper going, you watch me. So he's basically threatened to go public, something that Rasti and Rasmus is accused of, which failed to prove. He's publicly stated, that it's gonna go public with, uh, with the, ref the horrendous decisions of the referees. And then, so he's, not only that he's a, a, a verbally abusive referees, he's also threatening to go public. So he's a committed, uh, basically the other act that, the, that Rassi Rasmus was basically being, uh, 
accused of is threatening Nick Barry to go public if he doesn't sit down with him. So he's actually committed that. And this is, you know, this is a recorded, record on record, he's actually committed that. So he was sanctioned with a match day ban for four weeks. So only four weeks. So, so even if true, even if Rassi Rasmus threat to Nick to go public was true, then that should still not be longer than four weeks, right? Like, so, so for my end, based on these examples I was given, he probably should get a fine for criticizing the referee as set by, you know, Eddie Jones here, the example they were given by Eddie Jones here, but maybe the fine should be a bigger fine because he's criticized the referee in a quite extensive, quite extensively. And then also the fact that he, there's no conclusive evidence that he actually threatened to go public. However, the fact that the video did go public and was leaked, so maybe there should be some kind of match day ban, but this should not be longer than four weeks because there's no definite proof. So the match day ban should probably be equal to or less than four weeks if you know, equal to less than four weeks are based on you know what's happened here. And the fine should be maybe bigger than what Eddie Jones is as you know as listed here, right? So that's somewhere in between. So for him to get banned or match day exercise till September, that's almost a year, like 10 months. It's ridiculous. It's actually preposterous, right? And one of the another reason why this is preposterous is the financial damage Erasmus could be suffering from this, right? So despite the fact that they're not issuing him a personal fine, uh, the South African rugby got fined 20 pounds, 20,000 pounds, but he's at, so Erasmus, Erasmus could be actually facing a much bigger financial penalty than intended because the fact that he's not able to be a match, be a match day to support the Springboks, to guide the Springboks, whenever the Springboks lose, his compensation package is impacted. So not only that they're you know severely punishing the Springboks for basically sidelining one of the, the their World Cup winning coach, they're also every time the Springboks like essentially lose a game. W Razzy Erasmus is going to lose out on bonus compensation payments. That's basically what uh, he's saying here. So wing bonuses uh, and performance uh, related incentives. So in essence, despite the fact that they're not finding, uh, the, 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 despite that, yeah, so in essence, this huge, so every, all the, this includes like rugby championship next year, which is huge bonus incentives for Razzy Erasmus and his coaching staff to win games. If he can't do that, if he can't be there to fulfill his duties and should his team lose, he's gonna be hugely penalized financially because of the because of the extended ban. So again, this is extremely. This is not just like oh, we are, you know, just you know. This is just not like oh, we're just punishing him for not able to to be at the coach box in the box uh, in the match day. This is actually financially severely hemorrhaging his financial situations based on the ban. So it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous how heavy handed this is. And finally, we have essentially, you know, the, 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 yeah, finally, you know, the, uh, as I mentioned before, the, the clips has been, you know, yeah, finally, the, you know, this is just, I think this is a, a case where so the, the charges against Razzie are 50-50. You can't really, you, they don't even have definite proof that he released the video to go public. They don't have pr uh, definite proof that he actually threatened the referee to go public with the video. Uh, so th this already like two of the main charges are not even conclusive and they still lev issued such a heavy punishment that is unprecedented. Uh, I, just, I think this is absolutely preposterous from World Rugby. And this, this goes just to show that it's not really what Rassi has done that deserved the punishment. It's World Rugby trying to set an example so that their incompetence in referee training, in referee support, in actually making the game, uh, hold the, the, ref, the referees accountable to a standard that is will that is international rugby worthy they failed to hold that uh they failed to you know they wanted to prevent people from exposing that they're failing business thus they 
put Rasi and Rasmus as a sacrificial lamb to, to set an example for everybody to, to keep your mouth shut or this could happen to you next. So this is absolutely preposterous. Let me know your thoughts. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, I think, you know, again, I hope this video would push some more awareness to as the substandards of refereeing the world rugby is, is pushing out to international rugby games. You, all the viewers watching this, we pay money to watch these international matches, most of us, I think. And this is quite frankly, uh, not what we pay for. This is not what we pay to watch. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Do you agree with the sanctions? And uh, thank you for watching this video. I'll see you guys later. Cheers.